On a moonlit night, there sits a house upon the hill, and something stirs within. Often can be filled with light, so hear my spell for building Jack's house. Cross of paper, thin and tall, sturdy glue or char. Two fondos made from plastic, plenty strips of shingles, five, ten, twenty, painted all in black and white. So gather round and don't turn out the light. Don't worry, this video is not going to be delivered to you entirely in musical numbers. A cinematography database that I used was having a contest to recreate a still from a movie, and I decided to recreate one from Nightmare Before Christmas, which meant that I had to build Jack Skellington's house. Pumpkin King is truly the energy that I aspire to put out every day, so this is fitting. Even my drink is straight up brewed from Sally. If I keel over in two days, you know why. I have seen a ton of amazing versions of this model made from all sorts of people. There was an amazing one from Ani Crafts. Check those out because they are incredible. So I'm starting with the house, cutting base shape pieces from paperboard. One piece down, so many more to go. The very front where the door is was relatively easy, but the sides of the house were really tricky. Now on all of these pieces, I really wanted to try to do as many details as possible before attaching any of them together. So I cut the door out as it's a little bit recessed, cut a piece out for the trim of the door to start creating its dimensional details, punched out a circle to create the center doorknob area. I framed the doorway with cardstock and then added the frame above it that's a half circle. Then I started cutting strips of cardstock for siding. Much like the Aunt Josephine's house project, much of this project was just laying on textures. So I started laying on the siding as irregularly as possible. I also added a vertical wood texture on the slanted wall piece above the door. I'm just warning you now, I'm gonna be siding for days. I think I ended up making the siding pieces a little bit too thin and subsequently making more work for myself. What else is new? Before attaching the door, I wanted to paint it. Most of the painting process in this project is the same. So I'll get into the specifics when we get to the bulk of the painting later. I also had to make the eyeball door handle. It was one of my favorite parts, even though it was a very tiny little detail. I made that from a tiny ball piece from a soap bottle in one of the previous projects. Painted that into an eyeball and added some varnish to make it just a little bit shiny. Once the door was complete, I attached that to the front wall and then I started putting in some details for the ornament above the door. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what this looks like, but in one of the shots it looks like there's a sort of heart shape above it, so I used a heart bead that I had that seemed like the perfect size and shape. Then I started creating the two side windows. Look at what I'm working off here. This is the best image of this window in the movie. Well, like many elements of this project, it is made from a combination of craft foam and paperboard. When building, I decide what materials to use based on the thickness. If there is a piece like the bottom of the ledge or the top that juts out just a little bit more, I'll use craft foam to give it more definition. Paperboard is easy to make clean cuts, so it's great for the inner frame and things like that. I cut the window shape out from the walls. Now before attaching the plastic for the glass of the window, I wanted to paint the frame and everything first so that it would be much easier sticking on our plastic from food containers as our glass. Now, while I'm sure Jack would be absolutely thrilled to have this beautiful cereal wallpaper, we gotta give the interior a fresh coat of gray paint. The interior side of every piece that I make has to be painted before I put it in. I glued the window into the wall and added the sill underneath it. For the ornamentation under the sill, I think I'm gonna paint under this area first just so that I don't have to do that later. I am using five round beads right next to each other to kind of make that detail. Since there are going to be lights on the inside of this, we need to be really careful about our seams to avoid light leaks. So I'm putting a tiny little bit of joint compound on 
the joints to make sure they are sealed. Once those wall pieces were done, I started assembling those together. This project needs to be assembled along the way so that I can size certain pieces and make sure that they'll fit where they need to go. Then I started working on the front awning. I made the main shape of it from paperboard and then I used chipboard from some packaging, which is a little bit thicker as the bottom support beam pieces. And so it begins, the dawn of the first shingling. I'm making these very similarly to how I did the ones on Aunt Josephine's house. So they are strips of cardstock that are a little bit wider than you actually want the shingles to be. Shingle shape is cut out from that, cutting almost all the way to the top, but leaving enough to keep it in one strip so that they're much easier to lay on. I'm starting to see my future working on the big roofs and let me tell you, the future is bleak. We need to be patient, that's all. But I don't want to be patient. Then just laying down the strips on top of each other, covering the entire roof. This also allows you to be able to pry up some of the shingle pieces. Then I started building the front balcony and the triangle window. I cut the area out and laid in a frame for it. The panes are in a spiderweb pattern and I saved these plastic spiderweb rings from Halloween cupcakes last year just for this moment. Honestly, they were a little bit too thick for the panes at this scale, but it just fit the project so perfectly that I feel like we can make that sacrifice to accuracy. Attached the side roofs onto that and then placed it onto its perch above the door. Then I started working on the balcony wall, mainly the window or door, I'm not really sure which it is. I created the frame from craft foam and drew in some wood pattern impressions. I cut out the area and put the plastic on. I also made some additional pieces to shape the window and also the balcony floor. I must admit I forgot to paint before adding the plastic, so now of course we have to be extra careful. This part was really important to paint now because it will be extremely difficult to reach once it's attached onto the project. I'm using white school glue to put most of this house part together. I used rubber bands to keep pieces together while they dry. I added the roof above the balcony, only the most professional solutions here on this channel, and put on the support beams, which were made from cut pieces of popsicle sticks. Then I had to make the big wall triangle part that the roof will attach to. As with every other piece, laying on the siding and creating that window. And then we're finally up to working on the main roof. FedEx said, please recycle. So we're making it into a roof. Now the roof was another one of the most difficult pieces to decide what the shape and size needed to be because it has three sections and is pretty askew on the house. I mean, almost everything on the house is askew in some way, but <laughs> on the left side, there is a triangle section of roof that is protruding and has a window on it. Made very similarly to the front triangle window section, just has triangular wall pieces instead that are sloped on the roof. Just assume from here on out that every wall piece is getting siding. And then it was main roof time. You know what that means. A lot of my process consists of things like hanging the project over my desk to be able to weigh down parts of it while the glue dries. Capping off the peaks with some folded rectangle cardstock pieces and then we could finally move on to the tower. As always the tower needs to be as lightweight as possible because it's going to be attached with one of the smallest joints. That means, say it with me now everybody paper mache. You can rip the paper mache from my cold dead hands. Let me just say that the tower in the movie does have a suspiciously paper mache like texture. Okay, so I made paperboard tubes vaguely in the shape to make a sort of armature for the tower and then paper mache goes over that. Once that was dry, I cut the hole for the window. It looks like a train horn. I'm kind of curious and painted the interior of that. I made the frame of that window from craft foam. I just realized that the music I'm listening to makes this so much more unnecessarily tense. Can you imagine if I just edited my whole video with that kind of music? <laughs>
from now on my channel is just all cinematic tension all the time. Then I had to start building the detail leading up to the main tower part. So again, I'm using things based on thickness. I use a foam core square and paperboard on top of that to create those two rectangular parts. After those, I chopped off the excess tower. To make this octagon piece, I cut a long strip and then folded up the sections into a Spirit World train ticket. I attached and added some wood siding texture onto that. Then then moving up, I cut the octagon base for the tower, cut a circle of course in the middle of it so that I could thread the lights up through later, and began building the lower walls up from that. On top of that, a larger octagon frame hangs over. I honestly feel like I'm constructing the Olympic torch right now. And then above that, we have the upper walls with the windows. This tower and this entire house has every window imaginable. I relate to Jack too much. They asked him what window he wanted and he couldn't decide, so he just said, give me all of them. <laughs> I'm only an election official here. I can't make decisions by myself. Then I needed to start detailing the outside of the tower. So I'm using yarn to add trim on the outside and also to create some spiral support elements underneath the octagon piece. To make those, I just coated the yarn in glue, formed it into the shape that I wanted it to be, and then let it dry. Now, you may or may not be happy to know that I am stopping myself this time from making the full interior, but I just had to paint the spiral floor and I also painted all the outer tower walls before attaching them. I used yarn around the windows to make the borders of those as well. And okay, just a little red tissue paper curtain real quick. Of course, so worth it for the amount you see it. I attached the upper walls and put trim where all the pieces meet. Then I had to add on the details under the ledges. So I cut some tiny foam pieces for the smaller ledge and then put on our swirled yarn support pieces. And then we've got one more roof to make. The tower roof starts out with a paperboard circle. And from that, we're essentially making a witch's hat. Once we have that form, the shingles are back. I cut four strips being like, maybe that'll be enough. It's not gonna be enough. So I laid those strips on going all the way around the outside and put single shingles at the top. My talents are renowned far and wide. Another shout out to all my single shingles out there. Now the roof has several outer details that we needed to make, starting with the top vinyl. I had the perfect bead to create this, threaded that onto a piece of wire and then into the opening in the top of the roof. Then making a pitchfork shape with wire to finish that off. While we're at it, we're also making the winch, which appears at two different places. There are a bunch of different versions of this model for the different scenes. That means that a lot of the elements are a little bit different in every model, but I chose to put it in the place that does doesn't make any sense because it looks cooler. We're getting a little crazy and calling upon my arch nemesis super glue to join some metal and beads together. So I made this from two beads and a small piece of wire in the middle. I wrapped some yarn around that and added a small metal hook piece to the end. So Sally can send me up some of her delicious poisonous drinks. I used three pieces to create the chimney on top. The thickest base is part of a stick. On top of that, there is a flat round bead. Then there's a thinner stick on the very top. On this chimney and the roof, there are sort of arrow spike pieces. So I made those with wire and masking tape. I feel like I'm rolling up a roll of toilet paper or an ancient scroll two opposite ends of the spectrum and cut it into the arrow shape. I glued that arrow onto the chimney. I added the final trim pieces onto the house and then they were ready to paint. I finally tried a homemade wet palette this time and I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> Kept my paint workable for a long time. The whole style of this movie is really very textural and supposed to look very hand-painted. We really want to get a lot of those hand-painted texturally lines and highlights and shadows in there. Most of the painting process is very similar, so I'm starting with a middle gray as a base. So I have somewhere to go with highlights and shadows. Take me mad, I can let you go and do it. How could you be so wireless? Come inside of my heart if you're looking for your 
covering everything in that gray and then going in with a dark gray and some black and white with a harder brush, dry brushing and adding that textured hand painted look. I started pulling up roof shingles to add some of that dimension so it didn't look all flat. The next time that I do a roof like this, I think I would probably paint the strips before I even cut them because it would be much easier to make sure that there are no unpainted pieces. It's a little bit difficult when you do it afterwards. We'll get it right next time. All those pieces were painted. I added the stick supports onto the tower, painted some thin craft foam strips to be the beams along the roof. I also created the swirled finials from wire. They're a bit like fancy swords, I guess. <laughs> I also painted the tower ceiling into its web pattern. Even when I'm not making the interiors, I just can't stop myself. I attached the winch on and also added the chimney and other arrows and all the roof details. This project is going to have interior lights. Now these lights were really great because they are super, super thin. So I could thread them up through that tiny hole in the tower very easily. To do that, I needed to take the plastic stars off of them. They come off super easily just if you heat them enough with a hair dryer, the hot glue will melt enough for them to just come off. Star down, star down. Well, that'll be a surprise for later. I'm in the middle of the night, stepping on the points of these stars that I dropped on the floor somewhere. The lights are daylight balanced, so I needed to make them orange. And to do that, I will be coloring them with permanent marker. Made sure to turn the lights off so that I could ensure that the color was evenly distributed. Then it's time to make that staircase base. I originally planned to put the battery pack right under the house because I was worried about the length of the wire. So I made a whole whole sliding system and everything for it, only to change my mind later. <laughs> I'm so sorry to do one of those. The next step is just build it. So I threaded this up through this top piece now and there's a step here. I decided for weight distribution purposes to put it at the base of the staircase later, which honestly I probably should have done in the first place. Every project has an element of trial and error and you'll have to fix your mistakes later. It's okay. The Ariadne cookie tin lid has returned to haunt us. I am the ghost of Christmas past. It's even Christmas themed. I made the bottom stone path that's sort of in a spiderweb shape with craft foam. Now we need to take after Jack and uh, ruin Christmas just a little bit. Using a yarn needle to carve out the lines. I glued that onto the face of that lid. Then I started adding the base for the rocks that will go under the platform later. I've done this method in quite a few projects using foil and then paper mache over it. So we're up to a particularly hard part, which is building up this staircase that kind of defies gravity a little bit. I've been trying to figure out exactly how to do this and just staring at it and it hasn't been going well. So <laughs> I found this scrap piece of cardboard and I was like, that looks like kind of the right shape. And then I just cut out another one and they look a little bit like sandworms. So we're headed in the right direction. I'm using quite thick cardboard. I was really worried about making this effect work just because of gravity. I'm always fighting gravity. Just trying to make sure that it won't topple over and break entirely in the future. It hasn't happened yet, so. To make the surface of the stairs, I am using craft foam, making indentations with a rock to make that kind of slate-esque texture. Then I started gluing those on and building the stairs downward. And this is also where I moved the light battery pack under the stairs. I hadn't planned to do that, but it fit in there perfectly. Perhaps it was trying to tell me that that is where it was meant to be. Here's my super fancy cable management to thread the wire up 
up to the house. I continued the foil rocks down that in preparation for paper mache. This will create the rock face and also strengthen the entire piece so that it will hopefully hold up a lot better. Now, in order to make sure that this stands up and we get that sort of gravity defying effect, we need to have a significant amount of weight at the bottom base to counterbalance everything at the top. As always, I'm using rocks for that. To determine how much weight I needed, I just kind of stacked everything up and balanced it out with rocks. Most of the rocks are going into a short platform under the tin lid, but a couple will be added on the front later as well. I continued all of the rock texture onto the bottom base, much like in the Jack and Daxter project, just to blend it in with the rest of the cliff face. I also started laying on paperboard bricks up near the top of the platform. I didn't get the pattern quite right. I think these bricks maybe turned out one of the worst things on the project, honestly. I tried. There's a shot of the ground that has this swirly texture. So that's what we're going to do for the top of the platform. I'm using my paper mache liquid, of course, and then drawing those swirly texture pattern lines into it. And then we need to start painting everything. Painted the stone web path at the base, adding texture around the edges, and also the swirl ground texture at the top. I also started painting the stairs. I'm using the same lighter gray base for the surface of the stairs and also the bricks at the top of the platform. Started building up the rock texture painting everything with a gray base originally and again going in with some blacks and whites to create those highlights and shadows and really bring out the three-dimensional elements. I love those mid-project reminders of what exactly you're building out of. This is just a glorified cracker box. I also made the doorbell so I punched out paperboard and spiraled some yarn around it and painted that, attached that onto the front. I created the spider with paperboard and some puffy paint. I'm not gonna lie kind of looks like, like a lobster. lobster. And then just painted it with its little eyes on and attached that to a tiny piece of yarn. I had to assemble this piece by piece up on the base so that I could thread the lights through everything. Yeah. You made walls fall, Jack. I put the base of the house on first and then created a hole in the roof to thread the lights through up to the tower. I'm starting to realize how ridiculous this actually is. It's gonna be cool, but like, wow, where am I gonna put this? Oh no. <laughs> There's always moments in projects when reality just hits. Why? Why did I make it so big? There's no going back now, right? <laughs> I mean, Putting the tower on was quite tricky because I had to attach it in the back, but I needed to see the positioning in the front. So I used a mirror while attaching it to make sure that it was in the right place. I put on the tower roof and also the front awning. To finish off that front awning, I needed to make the front beams that attach to it. So I carved some of the details into popsicle sticks with the Dremel, cut those out, painted them, and really trying to bring out the design with the highlights and shadows. Attach them on. I also made the back trees just from some sticks and glued them together into the shapes. And then we were into the very final details. I attached the finials onto the roof crests, put on the final support pieces for the tower where it meets the main roof, and added gravel around the tree bases. Painted the front rocks that I had added for counter supports to blend them in with the rest. And we were finally done with Jack's house. <laughs> so here is my little piece of Halloween town.
So after a couple months work, I can proudly report that this baby has won me a free hat. Nice work, Bone Daddy. Yeah, I guess so. I am so sorry that this took so long to get to you. I think this might have been the biggest project that I've done yet. I believe it was our most horrible yet. Physically, it definitely is. The height of this thing is almost two and a half feet. So where I'm putting it, I have no idea. The shelf is getting a little ridiculous, but technically it did fit. As always, I want to say the biggest thank you to everyone on Patreon. I had so much fun working on the credits for this one. That process will be in the bonus video over on Patreon. You are a huge part of what keeps this channel going, so thank you so much. If anybody has Halloween plans or costumes or projects that you're doing, I would love to hear about them, even if it's only September. <laughs> I hope this gets you started in the spooky spirit.